Hey, it's David. Let's move on with the final stages of the crash repairs to the 390 Duke by sorting out the handlebar risers. If you've watched the handlebar installation video, a link for which should appear up here for you if you haven't, then you'll remember that I replaced the OEM handlebars, which were bent. You can see the crease line here because the bike went down on the bike went down on this side. So this handlebar is bent back. So I replaced them with some uh, Rock Bagaros stunt handlebars, which are nice and flat and fit me much better than these do. But even when riding them, I can still feel that the handlebars are slightly twisted. And that is nearly always down to the handlebar risers because you've got to understand that if you smack the bike hard enough to bend this, then the thing that it's attached to here, which is the handlebar risers, also are taking some of that impact. These are one piece. They are connected across here because it's also the mount for the TFT screen. So I think we're going to have to replace this clamp. But first of all, let me show you what I mean by the problem. Right, so from the right hand side of the bike, if we have a look and we try and compare these two clamps. But what you might be able to see here is this top here, if I can hold these parallel, is further out than the bottom compared to this clamp. As you can see, that clamp is just a little bit out. I've got the bottom sort of at the same point, but the tops, right, leans back more. It's not a lot, but if this clamp here is just a millimeter back over this distance, that means it's now going to be two millimeters, three millimeters, four millimeters, five millimeters, so half a centimeter back, and that's just with one mil difference here. So this handlebar will sit back half a centimetre more than this one. So what we should be able to do is to sit this ruler across these clamps and it should be perfectly equal. But if I put this one flat here, so that is now flat against both of those and I've got it against the top here, if I press the bottom, And the same here. So if I press that flap against there, that's how much distance we've got. So those clamps are not square. This clamp is bent. Now the problem we have here is that this clamp here is cast alloy. You could try bending it back, but this is cast alloy. Cast alloy does not like bending it will break. And that's the other issue here, is that there could be fatigue in this clamp. There could be a crack forming because it's been bent. And as I say, it doesn't like being bent. So the issue I have here, and even though it's not a lot, and I can, can ride with it and have been riding with it, that clamp could in theory break. So what I wanna do is pull it off and uh, have a closer look at it. Now to get this apart, the first thing we have to do is to remove the indicators from here because this TFT screen on is held on by four bolts. Two here and two at the bottom which are underneath here. So first things first, let's get this cover off. Okay, so that's the cover off. We also need to remove plug for the TFT screen. I'm going to need to take the indicators off because they actually come through this bracket. Okay, so looks like we're going to have to take the headlight unit out 
in order to actually trace the indicator wires back to their connectors. Headlight is held on by three screws. There's one here, you can't really see it in there because it's too dark. One here. And the one at the top you just saw me remove. Do not remove this one because this is the actual headlamp adjustment. So don't touch that one. Let's pull these other three out. They would be easier to get to be honest if the bike was on its side stand but because I've got the front wheel clamped in place I've limited my own access with the three screws removed we should be able to just lift it up a little bit and pull it free pressing the switch and remove the plug so now we can see the indicator wires come down here and plug in here so gray for the right side of the bike so green to the right Now we can access the TFT screen. So now the clamp unit is actually ready to be removed. Right, so that's clamp off. And now the handlebars are free. With the handlebars out the way you can see the tops of the bolts and just in there you can see the nut so what i'm going to do is i am going to get a spanner in there and i'm going to take those nuts off both sides and then i can pull this clamp off and uh, see if i can see whether it's actually really square or maybe there's a bolt one of these bolts is bent or whatever so Let's get the clamp off. So you've got a bottom cap, which sits under the bushing, and you've got a locking. That's pretty tight. That feels like it's under tension. Right, so there's your bolt. So it's a good chance that one of these two is, is actually bent. Let's get the other one off. Yes. Okay, I'm going to show you this in a minute. So if you thought this was all a bit over the top, now that first bolt had difficulty coming out. To me, that was already a warning sign because it meant something was under tension and it shouldn't be under tension because they should just slip straight out. In fact, I had to unscrew it does suggest that the clamp is bent and was forcing, putting pressure on the side. The clutch cable goes through a clamp here, which is bolted in. To there. And then this comes out. Right, so when I said there's a there's this clamp on the clutch cable that uh, goes onto that bolt and that nut goes underneath that clamp and bolts it up there. And there, that's exactly what I was talking about. Now, whilst it, it isn't really an issue for the handlebars as such, because bear in mind, the handlebars are clamped directly to this, which is a solid piece of glass, which is bolted through to here. So 
this is actually secure. No matter what happens in here, and as you can see, this is breaking. And if we come through to there, you can see it's cracking all the way through. Even if that broke in the middle here, if I just got an angle grinder and cut out this middle section here, it wouldn't really affect the stability of the handlebars because they're still bolted into here, which is bolted through to here, which is exactly like all of my other bikes. Um, they all have just a single clamp. So this is not actually structural, but it certainly is cracked through here. And this is why this clamp is sitting twisted to the other one. So I'm going to actually replace this clamp. And while I'm at it, I may well, just for good measure, replace these nuts, these bolts as well. But yeah, these do bend. When that clamp shifts backwards like that, when you, which is what happens when you hit the, when the handlebar hits the ground, that is bent back and it puts stress on that bolt. Even if it's not bent, it will have stretched it a little bit. And uh, it's obviously enough to have broken that. So I'm gonna replace those just for good measure. It's a little extra money, but peace of mind is worth it. Now, bear in mind, you also got some rubber bushes and stuff in here that we, we need to recover because they won't come with a new clamp. So I'm gonna get that on order and then we'll come back and finish the job. So I've ordered new parts. I've got new bolts, new nuts to hold the new clamp on. But the thing I forgot to do was to order the new handlebar clamp because like the old one, it's bent. So that's of no use to anybody. I'm just gonna use it to clamp the handlebar down lightly while I order a replacement so that I can get this all back together and get the bike off the ramp so and the, I can just use it to push it around. This is just a reverse of taking apart, so I'm not gonna bother you with too much detail because literally all we are doing is replacing and bolting back together. I've rolled the bike backwards so the front wheel is now outside the clamp which means I can now turn the wheel from side to side. It's on an axle stand at the back. With the handlebar mount, clamp, risers, whatever you want to call it, we can now put our handlebar just back in loosely, which relieves all the pressure of the cables that we had a minute ago when everything was pushed back. So we'll come back and clamp this up properly when we're done. Now a rubber washer like this is easier to install if you've got some lubrication in there. So I'm using red rubber grease, which is designed for this application. So let's get this reinstalled again. Okay. 
I'm going to suggest it'll be easier with this cover removed to get this headlight in. It requires some manipulation of the wiring and you'll be able to see much better what you're doing. Make sure you don't trap any wiring. And then lightly torque into place before finally torquing down evenly on the clamps. Now I need to replace this clamp here so I'm not going to spend too long doing this but this is basically about right. Now of course the final test is to see if it still works. Looks good. Indicators work. Horn doesn't work. Lights will work. So bikes back together, new handlebar clamp uh, risers are on there. I do need to replace the handlebar clamp on this one, but that's an easy job because it's right there. It'd take a couple of minutes to replace it. Otherwise, bike's great running. I had a minor connection issue with the horn. That's now solved. So the bike is now ready to ride, or as KTM put it, ready to race. And on that note, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you guys again soon because I have another upgrade to make to this bike.